Hi, this is Anna, and this is Check It at the Round Table, where we discuss movies, books, music, and stuff. Today, we are discussing how you can connect with us on social media, and also how you can support us. We are reachable at this lovely podcast on various platforms. We also have several YouTube channels: The Hand Network, Check It Round Table, and also the Asian Drama Club. I will drop the links in the description so you can check those out. You can also reach us online at our website. That's onacar.com. That's o n n a c a r r dot com. You can support us through either PayPal or Venmo. Our PayPal email address is roses r o s e s out of the snow o u t o f s n o w at gmail dot com, and you can support us also on Venmo. The the connection for that is at on a car, and that's uppercase O and uppercase C, and it's O N N A C A R R. The last four to verify are one one four three. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hi. This is Anna, and this is Check It at the Round Table, where we discuss movies, books, music, and stuff. Today, we are discussing My Tooth for Your Love, episode five, peeps. This episode opened up in a really nice way. I have to say, I'm going on a little digression here, but the thing that I think I like most about Taiwanese drama in particular is the fact that. It seems like when you're watching a Taiwanese drama, the characters are so careful with one another. If you want to think of it that way, I mean, full of care, not like oh, they're going to be fragile and break. Okay, not that kind of care, but careful as in they really consider the other person in the storyline. And the thing that I really liked about the opening scene in this episode is. When Jen wakes up from his fever by sitting there beside him on the bed, conked, and he kind of just puts his head next to Bai, and Bai wakes up a little bit and he's like, "Oh!" and he 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 moves his head toward Jen instead of away, and he he touches his forehead and he goes, "Your fever's broke. Now be nice." And then he goes back to sleep. Well. Jin then gets up and he puts a pillow by Bai, so Bai has something to hold. And at the same time, he's talking to himself about this, kind of like as a flashback moment. He says, "You know, I never knew that someone's basically his ability to be so open and honest could be so overwhelming. His ability to be vulnerable could be so charming." And then you go on to the rest of the story, but. I really like that beginning part because I think you know one of the most listened to podcasts on this podcast is Brené Brown's TED Talk on vulnerability. I did a podcast on it. I think we've gotten like a crazy amount of hits on that one. But the thing that I really like about Brené Brown's talk, and I've listened to it several times, I really just like a lot of what Brené Brown does. But vulnerability is hard for people. It's like If you if you're vulnerable, you have to trust that other person to be who they say they are, which for some people is much easier than others. It's like I don't mean it weird, but I've never really been the trusting type. It's like I'm kind of like I hope for the best, I expect the worst, but I'm really hoping for the best. But most people aren't like that. It's like they can just go, "Oh, it's all going to work out great," and you're sometimes sitting there logically going. It doesn't always work out great. It can, but sometimes it doesn't. But the thing that I really liked about this episode is with Bai and with Jin. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how their relationship is basically built on the premise of Bai being able to be vulnerable with Jin, and similarly, Jin being able to be vulnerable with Bai. I think in a lot of times, you know, we think that relationships romantically are based on love or attraction and all that, and I think in many ways, oftentimes they are. But I also think that if you cannot be vulnerably honest with people, 
it's going to be very hard to be in a relationship with them. I think that's one reason why I find dating so difficult for me to get my head around, other than the fact that I'm homosexual. But I think, you know, the fact that you're going out with someone who you don't even know really is disturbing for me. It's like, you don't know how they are. You don't know how they react in trouble. You don't know how they react in conflict. You don't know how they react on a good day, bad day, whatever. That's something you have to learn. It's like, do I really want to do that? Not particularly. I'd rather stay home and watch Asian drama. I mean, no offense. Something like that is much more fun than the other. But anyway, I'm just saying. So Bai and Jin, they wake up together. Um, Jin goes back to the office. Bai goes in for his surgery to get his wisdom tooth extracted. During the surgery, um, Jin is getting his um, mouth ready for surgery. He's like, well, will my tooth coming out give me more of a V-shaped face? Because everyone wants a V-shaped face. And Jin is like, you have a nice face as it is, Bai. You don't need a V-shaped face. Your face is just fine the way it is. I really haven't quite figured out why people want a face different than the shape they have. I'm like, you know, you... You have face. You you have a good face. I mean, why do you want to change it? But anyway, Bai is convinced that if he had a V-shaped face, he would be so much more attractive. <laughs> he's just kind of adorable the way he's not in like uh, like I'm not saying that in like anything. Sometimes I'm just going, he really is kind of an adorable character. I'm like, he looks nice the way he is. Why would he want to change his face? But anyway, he goes to the dental office. And he gets his tooth extracted. And also Jin gives him a tooth pillow that's like a toothbrush to hold. That he you find out at the end of the episode he had bought it special just for Bai to have during his dental visit so he could hold it. And then when he gets home, Bai takes all his stuffed animals and introduces them to Mr. Toothbrush, which he doesn't name because he doesn't want to get attached to it. But he puts Mr. Toothbrush in the t-shirt that Jin had. And it's it's just kind of funny. Now, in this episode, we also have the colleague of Jin is taking care of the teeth of this athletic guy that comes in that needs his teeth repaired. I'm really not sure what that whole thing was about. I was like, this is a weird digression. Maybe we'll pull that loose thread up later on, but I really don't get the point right now. I'm trying to also figure out if the guy who plays the athletic guy is actually Hank from I Do Be Left in House. I'm not really sure, but I'm going to could be with the mustache. I, I don't know. Anyway, he seems a little tall for Hank, but I'm not very good with people in heights. So anyway, we had those digressions. We also have Alex and G. Kian, I think is his name, having a discussion because G. Quinn thinks it's it's nice that the women sometimes ask for the drink between the sheets. And Alex is like, you never take a drink called that he quinn because there is a there is a very short line between being really really stupid and being romantical and if you take that drink that is a that is a that is reckless and that is not what you should do as a bartender so he's basically telling he quinn do not flirt with women who come to the bar it's a bad idea he quinn so anyway at the same time he quinn's like well well have you ever been romantically involved with her he's like no no i haven't they may alone. <laughs> and he says, well, you must have been romantic. And he says, if you want to stay, I'm going to go right ahead, but I've got stuff to do. And I really like how Alex is just kind of like, I don't have time for this. I'm just trying to take care of the bar, take care of my friend who owns the restaurant, take care of this kid who cannot go home because he's ticked off his parents and his parents have ticked off him. I've got a lot on my plate. I do not want to discuss my romantic life or lack of it with anyone, at least of all a teenager. I mean, you know, and I can't really blame Alex at all because I'm like, he Quinn right now is a little, a little irritating. At the same time, he Quinn ends up um, talking to us about the drinks. They have that discussion. They have a little back and forth about if Alex was ever in a relationship before. I'm really not quite sure if he Quinn likes Alex right now or if he's just trying to talk to him in a way I really don't know for sure with he Queen yet. It's going to be interesting to see how that turns out too. But I would give this episode a 9 out of 10. I really liked the beginning. I just didn't get the little digressions with the um, the athletic guy and the assistant dentist. That didn't make a lot of sense to Anna. I was like, why, why did we spend you know, we only have 22 minutes for this episode. I don't see where we went on that little ramble unless we expect to come back. And I've watched episode six and we did not come back to that little ramble. So I'm like, 
Why don't we bring back to that little rainbow and why did we put it in there in the first place? But anyway, we also find out in this episode that Bai goes and talks to Jin's friend, who is also his assistant, to ask him basically, did your boss ever have a relationship? She's like, well, he had a relationship with a senior. The senior and him dated for four years. Jin would do anything for that senior. And then the senior went off and married somebody else in a surprise. Nobody really saw that coming. And it really bothered Jim. That was seven years ago. So Jim's been running his dad's um, dental office for quite a while. He hasn't been in a relationship with anyone. And Bai gets in his head that, oh, he's not in a relationship because he's brokenhearted because this, this senior broke his heart and he cannot get over it. So by solution is he asks Alex to um, go find him some girls who would be available to date. And Alex is like, why do you want to take these girls? I thought you were getting along well with the director. You and him seem to be doing well. What What's with the girls? Because Alex doesn't know what he's asking for Jen, not for Bai. And Bai's like, well, you know, I think the director and I make a good friends, but I am so uncertain of my own life. I really don't want to have to put that on someone else because you know what it's like to live with me or be around me. And Alex is going, bye. Do you know the term YOLO? And Bye's like, yes, yes, I know the term YOLO. And he's like, you only live once, bye. So if you really like someone, you should consider going with them instead of sitting there and going all the terrible things that can happen. And I think this is funny coming from Alex because Alex also does not date, apparently, probably because of all the terrible things that can happen. And he's giving this advice on YOLO, which I find kind of comical. But anyway, also, if you are not familiar with Alex in the show, his name is Alex Chu. He has, or Cho, he has many YouTube videos of his music. He did the We Best Love, um, the two, like the Love Letter and the Hard to Let Go. Very good pieces. He was also uh, an actor in that show as the bartender um, for one of the crucial dialogue scenes. But anyway, he also speaks very impeccable English. I have to say, Taiwanese in general, speak excellent English. I mean, amazingly so. All my Taiwanese students, pretty much it's like their English is impeccable. And Alex is no different. When he speaks in English, he speaks impeccable English. Now, I will say the interesting thing I think about the Taiwanese English accent is it's very it's a very quiet form of speaking compared to most speakers of English. It's kind of very, very calm, very quiet. It was like my great big grandpa when he would talk. Very calm, very quiet. He was not Taiwanese at all. But my point is, it's very calm and very quiet. And it's kind of funny to hear the the Mandarin intermixed with the English because they kind of go back and forth and back and forth in the series with English, Mandarin, English, Mandarin. And I will say that this series is opposed to plus and minus, and I do be loved in house. The English spoken in that was very um, broken English, no offense to the actors at all, but they did not speak fluent English. And so it's interesting to see this series with very fluent English spoken throughout intermixed with the Mandarin, which I find kind of interesting. But that is my review of My Tooth for Your Love, Episode 5. Check it at the round table. Bye! Hi, this is Anna, and this is Check It at the Round Table, where we discuss movies, books, music, and stuff. Today, we are discussing how you can connect with us on social media and also how you can support us. We are reachable at this lovely podcast on various platforms. We also have several YouTube channels, The Hand Network, Check It Round Table, and also the Asian Drama Club. I will drop the links in the description so you can check those out. You can also reach us online at our website. That's onacar.com. That's O-N-N-A-C-A-R-R.com. You can support us through either PayPal or Venmo. Our PayPal email address is roses, R-O-S-E-S, 
out of the snow o u t o f s n o w at gmail.com and you can support us also on Venmo the the connection for that is at on a car and that's uppercase o and uppercase c and it's o n n a c a r r the last four to verify are 1143 thank you so much for listening talk to you soon bye Thank you.